To the Supreme Court we go. We are waiting on two big decisions still from the high court, whether the president indeed has absolute immunity and whether the 14th Amendment means that he can be kicked off the ballot. Just two slightly important things. Just a little bit. Just a little yeah. bit. Let's bring in Joan Biskubic. She joins us from Washington. We've got a lot to get to with the court, but let's just start there. I mean, I suppose we could hear from the court because they have conference today on these soon today. That's right. Uh, Mid-morning, Poppy and Phil. First of all, it's great to see the both of you. In mid-morning, the justices will meet in private in the conference room off the chambers of the chief justice, and they'll look at the week's business. Now, as you know, they heard some important cases this week, too, that they're going to have to take pre preliminary votes on. So Donald Trump is not the only things on, thing on their mind, but it is on Jack Smith's mind. And Jack Smith and Donald Trump have both submitted filings. Uh, as you know, they've been up there for a week with their filings saying, are you going, you know, intervene or don't intervene in this. And I think what we could get as soon as this afternoon, but maybe not until early next week, some kind of schedule that says uh, what kind of timetable the justices would set for filings and oral arguments in the case that would decide whether uh, former President Trump should be immune from criminal prosecution. And the reason this is so important to everyone outside the court, at least right now, and especially Jack Smith, the special counsel representing the United States government and former President Trump, is that whether the justices intervene will determine whether he is actually tried for conduct related to his protesting the 2020 election before the 2024 mm -hmm. election. Now, one thing I will add, the justices could decide just to let stand a ruling by a lower appellate court, the D.C. Circuit, that said whatever uh, protections Donald Trump had when he was president from any kind of criminal prosecution have evaporated now that he's a former president. But I have to say, Poppy and Phil, the Supreme Court tends to like to have the last word on questions of presidential power, and we can see right now they're they're looking to have potentially the last word on their own timetable. Clearly. Yeah. I mean, it, just to put my really astute analysis, this is a huge deal <laughs> for what's going to be happening in the year ahead. I, I look forward to your reporting based on the private uh, gathering that happens today, and the reason I say that is because you also have Great reporting about the frustration of liberal justices over how conservatives have really accelerated the moves to limit the power of federal agencies. And to, again, be very clear, the fact you have this reporting underscores a level of access to this world that I just didn't think existed. But walk people through it. It's a fascinating story. Well, you know, here, as we're all watching, you know, these two Donald Trump cases, the Supreme Court is going about its regular business and business that, frankly, will really affect a lot of Americans in their daily life. And it, they have a whole slate of cases this session that goes to the power of the federal government to protect Americans in ways from, you know, environmental uh, pollution, air and water pollution kind of concerns, uh, consumer fraud concerns. Uh, we have a big case coming up in March that uh, tests the Food and Drug Administration's ability to declare uh, abortion medic medication, Mifepristone, safe and effective for nationwide use. So these kinds of cases are continuing. And I know that, you know, the liberal justices have been so uh, frustrated with this pattern of conservatives uh, really reigning in federal regulatory authority. And that burst through during oral arguments this week in two important cases, one involving the environment that the justices will likely vote on today, uh, today in that private conference that has to do with uh, President Biden's uh, plan to try to stop, um, you know, control pollution in upwind uh, states to protect uh, what would flow across borders into downwind states, uh, something called the Good Neighbor Plan. So those kinds of issues, you know, are really front and center for the justices and frankly will have as much effect on the American public as anything they do in the Donald Trump cases. Joan Biskupic, thank you so much. I am here to talk Chevron deference with you any day. Every and day. All day. But on a serious <laughs> note, you have been such a delight bringing your reporting to us every day and I continue to look forward to watching it and cheering you on. Thank you, Joan. Well, thanks. Great to be with both.